Hi, my name is Joe Onisik. I'm a technical marketing engineer with INSBU, and I'm here today to discuss the ACI forwarding operations with you, give you a little bit of an idea of how we forward traffic within the ACI fabric. So to kick off, what I've drawn here on the board is a spine leaf architecture known as a CLOS architecture. This is the base architecture of how we design and deliver ACI fabrics. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to this architecture. One, it promotes the uh, promotes the traffic east to west, which is the way data center traffic patterns are moving today, rather than the north-south traffic patterns we've been designing in the past. It also offers us very linear scale. With this type of fabric, uh, the CLOS architecture or spine leaf design, when you need more server or device connectivity ports, you simply add a leaf. And you can add leafs up to the scale of the amount of spines that you have in the fabric. When you need more redundancy or more paths for bandwidth within the fabric, you simply add a spine switch. We typically connect every leaf to every spine, and the spines will only connect the leaves. Everything else in your network architecture is going to connect up here at the leaf layer. Within the ACI model, we look at this with two different spaces of where, we, where we're looking at traffic. We have the infrastructure space, which exists here, where we're forwarding traffic out to what we call the user space. And the user space can consist of a single organization, or if you were talking about scaling out to provide infrastructure as a service services, we could scale out to 64,000 tenants sitting within this user space. So anything external to the fabric would be what we'd consider that user space. Connected up at our leaves, you'll see that we have several things that would make sense at your access layer of your data center in a three-tier design, like our server ports and our server hosts for virtual machines. We also are going to connect up our service devices. Those could be virtual or physical service devices, shown here as load balancers and firewalls in a physical format or virtual format down here. And we also connect up our external networks. Now, when we connect up these external networks, we don't look at ACI in isolation of what you already have in your data center. You've already got an investment in data center switching infrastructure, and we connect and integrate cohesively with that infrastructure. And that's shown here. Whatever networking gear you choose to have in that space will exist and cohabitate with ACI from that user space. We also have our connectivity to our outbound networks. So this could be intranets, shown here in green. This could also be internets, shown here in blue. So anything external. So basically, you would take the router that's serving that traffic, and you would connect it up at the leaf layer of the ACI fabric. Now, when we talk about fabric forwarding, inside the infrastructure space, we utilize VXLAN, or Virtual Extensible LAN. This is becoming the industry de facto standard for a layer three overlay topology. This is prevalent in all modern chipsets, including merchant silicon platforms and many of the products that Cisco offers. What a layer three topology offers us is the ability to abandon spanning tree and the constraints of the spanning tree protocol and have a fully routed, robust, multi uh, meshed network that doesn't have to rely on blocking links to prevent loops. So we do this using layer three routing, and then we can encapsulate that traffic from that user space into VXLAN, and then use that VXLAN overlay to be able to provide layer two adjacency when we need to. So we can emulate that layer two adjacency you would get out of a VLAN while giving you the extensibility of VXLAN, the scalability of VXLAN, and then several other advantages that we offer utilizing it. When traffic comes in to the infrastructure from the user space, that traffic can be untagged frames. It can be 802.1Q VLAN tagged frames. It can be VXLAN. It can also be NVGRE. So these are two overlay technologies that are prevalent in the data center. What we want to do is take any of this traffic and normalize it within the fabric. So when it's received from this virtual machine at my leaf shown here, what I'm going to do is translate that into VXLAN within our infrastructure space and then transport it to where the destination is going to be. I can transport that, let's say for instance these are Microsoft Hyper-V servers and using NVGRE. I can take that NVGRE, encapsulate it into VXLAN, transport it to the leaf it needs to exit on, and maybe these would be VMware servers using VXLAN. I can re-encapsulate it into a VXLAN frame basically drawing that connection between two different frame formats across the fabric. We can do this between any hypervisor's workloads or any physical device, whether that be a physical bare metal server or a physical service device for layer four through seven devices. So this gives us the ability to completely normalize the traffic coming in, 
rather than double encapsulate it here within the infrastructure space, I'm going to re-encapsulate it at line rate, and then I'm going to translate that back out into the frame format that's required at the exit or egress port. We're going to do the same thing providing routes between devices within this VXLAN fabric, as well as providing their external routes to either that intranet, that internet, or out to the existing data center infrastructure. When we look at connecting that data center infrastructure into ACI, what we do is allow in here either typical subnets on any given VRF or a VLAN from any given device externally. We then translate that into the fabric as external entities or external groups that can become parts of the application-centric infrastructure that we use building out our logical model. When we translate, fabric in the, when we translate traffic in the fabric, VXLAN provides us quite a few capabilities. As the first one I mentioned was, is it allows us to alleviate spanning tree protocol. But it also allows us to get location independence within the fabric. An IP address itself is intended to, to identify that device for forwarding purposes. But it's become very tied to the physical locality of that device and the way in which we use it. So within our fabric, what we do is take where a device exists, or what a device's address is, its IP, and we map that to a VXLAN virtual network ID, or VNID, which is going to help us identify where that is at a given time. So what this means is if I'm talking about this virtual machine as VM1, this virtual machine is identified by its IP address within the server and the VNID, or LEAF, it's sitting on right now. If this virtual machine were to migrate over here, and this virtual machine was now VM1, what happens is I translate that VNID into the new location so that now I know this IP is that same device existing at a different location. This allows me to provide very efficient forwarding to a device while still allowing the flexibility provided by workload mobility. So this gives us a very robust fabric, extremely scalable, and allows us to handle normalization of forwarding from our user space across the infrastructure space to any given endpoint. When we look at this, the scalability of the fabric is based on both the way in which we've designed it and the spine leaf design that we've built out. So we get linear scale from both a performance and a cost perspective from a very small scale hundred or so ports at a, at a very cost effective price to up to 100,000 10 gig ports and a million endpoints. So this is the architecture and the user space forwarding for how ACI operates. We have several other videos to talk about the way in which our logical model operates, and we'll have videos coming that talk about how the fabric itself handles forwarding internally. So please stay tuned and, and go take a look at our other videos. Thank you very much.